All right, going to go through a common scripture that Catholics like to twist via their eisegesis. They are basically forcing their own doctrine into the text instead of just letting scripture speak for itself, essentially. And this is a common scripture you see them pull out when they argue against uh, following the Bible alone and say, oh, you have to follow the church. You know, you have to follow what they say. Okay. And to them, the church is referring to the uh, organization in Rome. So that's why I say it's eisegesis, because they're forcing their own doctrine into the text. Where, you know, because the word Catholic does not appear anywhere in the New Testament. So, uh, but I'll cover that in another video probably. But here's the scripture they like, they like often use. Like, you'll see them use this quite a lot. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And they'll basically use their eisegesis. I'll put it this way. Catholics will basically force their own doctrine into the text instead of letting scripture speak for itself. Again, this is what eisegesis is, you know. Because exegesis is where you just explain what the scripture is saying. You don't add your own opinions or, or your own doctrine. But Catholics with their eisegesis, see, for them, in this verse, the church, they'll say Catholic church in their mind. They're subconsciously, essentially, they're what, what, what they're doing is subconsciously they're adding to scripture. Because they see church and they see, well, see, it's the Catholic church. They're adding Catholic to the verse subconsciously. Catholics think the church in this verse is referring to Roman Catholicism. But again, when comparing scripture to scripture, exegesis, not eisegesis, we clearly see that this, not, this is clearly not the case. Okay, what is the church referring to in this verse? Well, first of all, why does it say that if the church is the pillar and ground of the truth? Well, Jesus Christ is the truth. John chapter 1, verses 14 to 17. Okay. See, this is why this is why when you're proving doctrine, you don't just you don't just pick one verse here and there or, or isolate verses here and there. You compare scripture with scripture, like we, like we're told in uh, first or first Corinthians chapter two verse thirteen, comparing spiritual with spiritual. One, uh, John chapter one verse fourteen to seventeen, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me. Uh, for he was before me, and of, of his fullness we have all we have all sorry all, all we have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now I'm not good at reading things on a computer. I've established that before. The reason why I use the computer is so I can navigate between verses easier. But notice what it says there. Okay, full of grace and truth, it's Jesus Christ. Okay, further proof of that, John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Okay? I want to elaborate on this point a bit more. When you are a member of the body of Christ, you are in the truth. Okay? John, 1 John chapter 5, verse 20. And if you have a King James Bible, don't just listen to me talk. Actually look in these verses yourself. You know? I'm not, I'm not the standard. Okay? Uh, you look at the scriptures. You look, you look at the verses yourself. Hence why I put them on the screen so you can see them for yourself. Uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 20. And we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, uh, in his Son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. So when you're in Jesus Christ, a part of the body of Christ, you are in truth. Why? Because Jesus Christ is truth. So what am I saying? The church in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 is referring to the body of Christ, not some physical organization in Rome. Okay? When you're a member of the body of Christ, you are indeed the pillar and ground of the truth because you're in Jesus Christ, who is truth. It's that simple. But again, the problem, like I said before, is that Catholics use eisegesis when reading scripture. They force their own doctrine into the text rather than just letting the scripture speak for itself and comparing the scripture with scripture. So whenever they see the church, for example, like in Matthew chapter, uh, I think it's 16 verse 18, they just subconsciously add the scripture and add Catholic to the verse when it's nowhere anywhere in the text. So that's what eisegesis is. So I wanted to point that out, how they twist 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 to essentially get you away from scripture and just listening to whatever the church says because, oh, just, just believe it because they say it. That's what a cult is. That's not biblical Christianity. That is a cult. So anyway, don't be deceived by Roman Catholicism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.